Hello, my name is Melissa Daniels and this channel is all about strabismus and different solutions that you can try to help fix strabismus. And strabismus is when your eyes aren't pointed in the same direction like in this picture here. This was me just a few years ago and I was able to get my eyes both straight -er, they're not perfect and working together through vision therapy and strabismus surgery and so in the next couple videos I'm gonna be talking about just some expectations that you can have from both strabismus surgery and vision therapy so today I'm gonna to talk all about what strabismus surgery can and cannot do because some people are expecting like this huge miracle from strabismus surgery and other people think that it can do absolutely nothing so I think it's really good to really take a look at like what are the actual possibilities with surgery now before we jump into that, be sure to go over to learn.strabismussolutions.com to get access to any of the resources that I have. I have some free downloads that can help you decide between surgery and vision therapy. You can also sign up for one of my courses. You can schedule a call with me over Zoom. There's lots of options depending on what kind of help you need in this area. All right, let's take a look at what strabismus surgery can do. What are the possibilities? And this is gonna vary completely on your diagnosis. I have a whole video all about success rates for surgery based on your diagnosis. That might be interesting for you. But in general, strabismus surgery is when the doctor comes into your eyeballs and he cuts and pastes the muscles. So sometimes he's tightening a muscle. Let's say your eyes turned really far in. He might tighten this outside muscle or loosen the inside muscle. Um, they might do it on both eyes, right? They're, they're basically manipulating the muscles to try to get your eyes in a straight position, right? That is something that strabismus surgery can do so that your eyes appear cosmetically straight, okay? Um, success rates completely vary based on your diagnosis, but um, that's the idea of strabismus surgery. That's what it's for. Um, another thing that strabismus surgery can do is if you've got somebody who can straighten their eyes and it's just taking a ton of strain and as soon as they relax the eye pops back out or it pops in um having that strabismus surgery can reduce that strain um that effort that's required to force the eye straight it can make it so that the eyes are straight in a more relaxed position so reducing that strain from forcing the muscles that is definitely something that strabismus surgery can help i experienced that personally um, another thing that surgery can help is with double vision so if you had single vision your whole life and then you develop surgery like after an accident and there's like a muscle that's been torn or something's going on and now you've got the strabismus and constant double vision because your eyes aren't pointing straight well if the surgeon aligns those eyes and you've had previous ability to bring those images together that can actually bring that vision back to single um it's tricky and not not 100 success rate at all but there are lots of success stories where surgery does help with that especially if, you know if somebody's been in an accident and it's you know this sudden onset of strabismus um for little kids if you have that surgery when they're super little it's it's not super common i will say but if that surgery is done while the visual system is still developing, then that brain can still learn to use those eyes and gain some stereo vision. Again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that that's like a guarantee, but that is possible. That's something that surgery can do, and it does happen sometimes. Um, another one that surgery can do, and this is really a frequent um, improvement, is improving peripheral vision. So if your eyes are pointed super far in, that really restricts your peripheral vision, your peripheral field that you're able to see. Um, it's very reduced because your eyes are pointing in and so it's, it's just this really small world. So if your eyes are more straight, even if you're still suppressing one of your eyes, that actually really opens up your peripheral field and can be life-changing for people when they're driving, um, different things like that. So even someone who's completely, not completely blind, but... Um, you know, their central vision is blind, so they can't read with this eye, but they've got peripheral with that eye. That's actually gonna really change the way the world looks. Now, the same is true that if your eye's out here and it turns way in, that might really reduce your peripheral field. Um, and so that's just something to know. Surgery can change your peripheral vision pretty significantly. Usually, the brain can 
even if this, it's suppressing the central vision in one of your eyes, that peripheral vision is still open. And so the brain is still combining the peripheral vision from both eyes. And so just good to know, like that can change. And so that's an important factor to look at. Like if your eyes are really turned in and you want to improve that peripheral vision, like that is something that surgery can help with. Okay, now let's look at what surgery can't do. So if you if ha you have this expectation, just know that's not really possible. Um, just so that you can kind of, you know, I like to just go into things knowing, like give it to me straight. I don't want anybody to sugarcoat anything. I want to just know exactly what to expect. And that is tricky because there's no exacts, but here's something that you cannot get from surgery. And that is a guaranteed result, especially when we're talking about time, right? The, at, I think some of the worst, like if you have congenital esotropia, so that's when you're born with strabismus and your eyes are turned really far in, believe success rates are around like 50%. That's not good, okay? Um, the higher success rates would be like a young child with intermittent exotropia. I think those success rates are closer to like 85%. So that there's a pretty range, but even like the highest success rates, they're still 15% of the time, it's not working. So I just good to know, like, does it mean you don't try? No, I still did it. And yeah, my, my result wasn't perfect, but definitely improved. So it's just good to know, like, there's no guarantee. So when your surgeon, when it doesn't work, you, you say, you're a terrible surgeon. It's like, no, that's just the success rate. <laughs> like, that's just how it goes for even the best surgeons. That's the success rate. Um, and then along with that, like, sometimes it lasts forever, but almost never. Usually it's, you're going to get a result that maybe lasts for five to 10 years, unless you're the, one of those lucky people that get the good fusion and the brain is using the eyes together, then those results will usually last a lot longer. Okay. Another thing that the surgery will not do is basically fix the problem that caused the strabismus in the first place. So let's say that you have strabismus that's linked to amblyopia because you've got a really weak eye. And so the brain ignores that eye and turns it out. Well, if you align those eyes, that eye will still have amblyopia, right? It's still going to be blurry and have blurry vision. You're not going to have the vision in that eye fixed because your eyes are aligned. Um, if you have strabismus because your brain can't use your eyes together, moving your eyes together is not going to fix that problem. Now, for really young kids, and I believe my surgeon told me 2%, of the time in surgery, you get spontaneous stereopsis. And that means that the surgeon aligns your eyes and your brain is like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna use my eyes together and now I have stereopsis, right? That's 2% of the time. And I believe that was a stat for like people that are, you know, I would say people over age five or eight or so, right? People that have fully developed visual systems. Now for really young kids, I think that percentage is a little bit higher that that spontaneously can happen for especially young kids who are still developing their stereo vision and their all of those neurological pathways are not fully formed yet that percent is probably higher but again it's not a high rate when you align those eyes it's not going to all of a sudden magically mean that your brain can use your eyes together that that isn't something that surgery can do it can get the eyes in a position where it's easier to learn but but that takes a lot of work. I mean, that took me years of vision therapy to get that piece. So the surgery helped get them physically aligned. The vision therapy got my brain to work. So it's just good to know. Like some people are like, yeah, I'm going to go get this surgery and it's going to make it so I have depth perception and, you know, all these other things. And it's just, it's probably not realistic, but surgery can definitely help get those muscles in the right place so that you're, when you're looking forward, your eyes look straight. So there you go. That is the short version of what strabismus surgery can and cannot do. And let me know in the comments, like if you disagree with me or you had a different experience, I'd love to hear it because that is the one constant with strabismus is there are a million exceptions to all of the rules that, that anyone sets forth for strabismus. There are always exceptions because it is such a unique diagnosis anything can happen. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you in the next video.